Hello and welcome to the final episode of Looney Tunes Back in Action. We start off confirming my theory that the black box is indeed the mouse cursor, so it's good to know. And in this episode, we shall be heading to the jungles of Africa and finally taking back the blue monkey diamond. After scrolling through the planet a bunch, there we go. Ground floor, cockatoos, giant flames, and poisonous snakes. Thumb teleporter. Get the to Tierra del Fuego and poof out. Acme cheapskates. Temple of the Blue Monkey. Hey, we must be getting close to the big finish. Big finish? Fuck for him, fuck attacks. If I'm gonna get that Tweety Bird in this video game, I'll have to make my move soon. You said it, Buster. Let's rack this up so I can get to the fabulous wealth part. Oh, brother. I don't suppose they got an elevator. They gotta get a new groundskeeper around here. And too bad I forgot me bathing cap. Funny, these logs are sort of like an inverse of the first challenge. You can think of the road as a negative space and the cars as a positive space, and you want to avoid the positive space and make your way around the negative space. But now here, you want to avoid the negative space, it's crocodile infested water, and utilize the positive space, these logs, the statue heads that slowly sink the more you stand on them. Just a little observation. Now this particular area is a bit annoying for speedrunners where you have to chase this monkey. Because the actual platforming can be very finicky. The game just does not handle the switch from 3D to 2D perspectives, especially when it requires a bunch of jumps. And I actually failed this the first time. Rather than immediately try again, I decided to go for the Michigan J Frog statue and bird seed planted on one of the islands. I eventually figured out you can use balloons, which, you know, it's nice I know that's what you're supposed to do, but I'm not very good with the balloons. Previous videos have established that. Well, at least the game can say it's finally back on track with the movie. The movie also ended in Africa, though it ended very differently. In fact, can you really say it ended in Africa when the final fight more or less took place in space and inside the Acme Studios? I don't know, I think Looney Tunes Back in Action needs a sixth world. I do like how there's a map of all the areas to come up. It would've been nice if there was something like that in the other levels. Just cause it looks cool. You want little old me to go? After getting that, it's time to actually play through the level. Chase after this monkey. I think there's a spot speedrunners use to body block the monkey. You can see how the camera sort of turns and changes angles as you jump from left to right. And also your character can, you know, not move very far horizontally when jumping. And kinda mess up there. I actually find an interesting little trick though, you mallet drop there and then you're able to hit him down on that floor there. I wonder if that would be a reasonable trick for speedrunning, if they ever miss the body block. 
this game came out on the GameCube and also the PlayStation 2. And I played it on GameCube version. I watched a long play of the PlayStation 2 version and for whatever reason, it looked a lot darker and kind of desaturated. Like the shadows were more pronounced and the colors weren't as vibrant. I'm wondering, was that standard for PlayStation 2? Because I don't remember that on GameCube. I actually decided to check out a few episodes of that uh, new Looney Tunes series, Wabbit. It's not particularly new now, but it's newer. And actually, it's now called just New Looney Tunes and no longer Wabbit. And I thought it was kind of alright. I think the newer characters, the uh, human ones, were kind of interesting. I like all the jokes with that sort of fitness guy. Would be nice to have more Marvin the Martian episodes, so there's so few. And I'm not really sure if it'll continue after the uh, newer shorts are made, the ones I was talking about earlier. Though they do sort of fulfill different niches since the newer shorts are only going to be a minute to six minutes long while the new Looney Tunes, I'll just call it Wabbit for ease and simplicity, is more like uh, full episodes or a full episode with two separate little plots to make up an episode. And here I'm trying to do a speedrun strategy where you flap down to an island that contains a Michigan J Frog and I think some bird seeds. And I fail over and over and over and over and over. until I decide to specifically try hugging the wall, staying real close to it. And finally, I managed to flap my way to victory. And it's when I collect this statuette here that I discover that there's actually a much easier way than doing that. Just need to go to a specific island at the edge. Oh, so you have to hit Sylvester here. And you're supposed to wall jump up there. So I'm just kind of going through this backwards, making it a lot more difficult than it needed to be. I don't actually recall getting up there when I played through as a kid. So, speedrun route might actually be my only means. I decided to hit Granny a few times. Seems like something you wouldn't be able to do in newer games. Like they'd somehow make her whack proof. Even though it sort of fits the whole zany nature of Looney Tunes, everyone can be smacked around with a frying pan and all it does is cause some stars to appear around their heads. If this is all really like a movie set as a title screen or menu select screen or whatever implies, as well as the first world in Warner Studios. It must have been a hell of a thing to accomplish. But then again, you know, the Looney Tunes back in action movie was also implied to be a set. And that also must have been a hell of a thing to accomplish. All that time and money and the film really didn't do that well domestically. It failed to make back its budget. It seems surreal that Looney Tunes would be a financial failure in any way, but I guess it just didn't have very good advertising, or it wasn't released at a very good spot. It was originally supposed to be like a summer movie, but it was moved back to like October. Cool! Spooky mask! Wow! 
watch out. It's like eating potato chips. You can't hit just one. I wonder what the script reading session was like for these guys. Like, did they, were they just instructed to speak gibberish, or were there specific syllables listed out? Make sure you speak in a deep voice like some African tribesman. Even though you're white as snow, which is another clue that this is just like a movie set and not real. Seems like something that might upset a few video game journalists in 2019. Just saying. And these two variations, uh, guys with the uh, monkey masks and spears and the well, floating masks that kind of look like the one from Crash Bandicoot, or at least remind me of that, are the two enemy varieties here. So a real uh, downgrade from the five whole enemy varieties in Area 52. I've actually been thinking, like, what kind of plot would I have if I was able to direct a Looney Tunes cartoon? And I came up with a few. One would be that, like, an Acme a manufacturer or warehouse has been shown to violate a ton of OSHA standards and the people working there need to absolutely fix it up before the next inspection or it'll be shut down. And so you'll have all these you know, people trying to make it safe and in the process end up setting off explosions, uh, getting electrocuted, just falling prey to the neglect they've been uh, falling prey to the neglect they've been giving to their jobs would be a uh, good for a lot of slapstick. And also, you know, a sort of hidden safety instruction video. Another is Daffy Duck is trying to film like an episode of Duck Dodgers, which is a sort of retro futuristic show. And Bugs Bunny is trying to film this like a uh, cyberpunk show. And they kind of clash with each other and try to argue for set space and. Uh, video equipment and all that stuff and so they end up sort of fighting using their respective weapons and tropes and media I think that would be a nice uh, sort of science fiction parody and all gets interrupted by Marvin the Martian and his steampunk HG Wells tripod get up and all of that another would be uh, Elmer Fudd decides he's not able to hunt modern day animals because he's not good enough. So he somehow gets his hands on time machine and decides to go back to the past and try to hunt things then. And goes back to like the dinosaur era and gets his ass kicked then. Then goes back to even further and still fails. He can't hunt Tiktaalix. He can't hunt the first hard-shelled sea creatures and goes all the way back to the first self-replicating molecule and still fails to make a catch. What I kind of wonder is how would like a Fantastic Voyage episode go with Looney Tunes? I mean, it, pretty much every cartoon ever has an episode like that, but I actually don't recall there being a Looney Tunes episode in any iteration that has a Fantastic Voyage plot where they go inside the human body. The closest I can think is an episode of Duck Dodgers when Marvin the Martian is uh, going inside Duck Dodger's brain after he stole it and finding out he would much rather not know about the inner psyche of Duck Dodgers. 
but that's, you know, not really a full-on Fantastic Voyage episode, that's just his downfall in the episode. Oh, and here's one, a Duck Dodgers episode parodying Alien. Like, my goodness, there's no parody or even joke about Alien in Duck Dodgers that I've seen. And that's surprising considering how many things it parodies. The uh, whole thing started as like a Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon parody. The Galactic Protector is like a parody of Star Trek's uh, Starfleet. There was an entire episode parodying Predator, there was an episode parodying A New Hope, an episode parodying Gremlins, uh, Tyranny's design is sort of a reference of Dijah Thor's from the John Carter novels, and uh, of Elita from Elita, Princess of Mars. Like, the show dips its toes into pretty much every big science fiction thing. The Centurions are kind of designed like Cyclones. And yet, no parody of Alien. And it's just so surprising, because it seems like something that would offer a lot of material. So yeah, if I was to rate a Looney Tunes cartoon, Duck Dodgers in a parody of the first Alien movie, like straight up, I think there's a lot of gags that could happen with it. Now unfortunately, I'm not writing any Looney Tunes cartoons, but, you know, maybe, you know, within those thousand minutes, but probably not very likely. In any case, those are just some ideas of Looney Tunes cartoons I had sort of floating around. That's one of the other nice things about Looney Tunes. It kind of very free to come up with all these different scenarios and situations to place these characters in yourself. Like, you don't have to be a professional writer to say, hey, you know what would be pretty funny? So anyways, I'll collect this monkey here and... I got a bit of a confession to make. I've played this game before, and I remember specific moments from my childhood. And this next segment doesn't change it, I remember it. The thing is, I remember not beating it. That's right, this upcoming area, this upcoming mission here, is one I have not beaten as a child. Meaning, most of it, or the final part of it, and everything after it, is new to me as far as actually playing the game. In fact, I haven't even seen the final cutscene, they tend to skip those in the speedruns. I do all the work and they get a hot bath. This is just about the hottest place on earth. Even my sweat has sweat coming out of it. Hurry before the rope is done! So you need to go around and rescue five of your friends from these boiling pots before time runs out. And there's two different places to go, one for Daffy Duck, one for Bugs Bunny. And every time I tried this as a kid, I, I just couldn't get through in time, and the timer always ran out, and I honestly can't even remember why. I think I might have missed some of the boiling pots in my route, like I read, went directly to that door and somehow missed, like, Speedy Gonzales burning alive here. I don't even remember why, but I just know I never beaten this. How's about a little heavy lifting, Dad Death? Stand a fine rabbit. This door is mine. Well, that was a bit of a time waste. I should have just gone to the wall. That might be another reason why I never finished it. I kept, like, using the doors whenever they came up, whether or not I still had time. 
Senior Citizen Frontero. They call him the Duck Knight. One home to mama, pal. A little help here, huh, Dave? This looks like a job for Duck Danger! <laughs> Nichols! Cheapskate. And despite, like, not beating this level, despite there being a timer that I know past version of me has failed to defeat, I still decide to look around for these statues, these damn frog statues. And the funny thing is, you can actually come back here uh, in later missions. It's not necessary to do this here. Now we're like halfway through. I, have, I actually have no idea what I'm doing. Go back to the same platforms I got up from. Like if I'm doing this bad as an adult, who's watched speedruns of the game, you could only imagine how poorly I did as a kid. I will say it would be nice if the timer paused while you were inside that door changing. Seems like something that's not really dependent on your skill as a player, but just something you have to wait for the game to load. How's about a little heavy lifting, Dad Dad? Something tells me this will require my unique talent. Boy, these guys will eat anything. I'm in for my five cents. Woo I'm starting to take the thing more seriously, even though there was a Michigan statue heard plain as day. I'm going right to Bugs Bunny. And I have less than halfway time to go. There's two more left. Now Daffy's one was pretty straightforward from point A to point B with the exception of Speedy Gonzalez's pot. But Bugs Bunny, oh I do kind of remember having trouble digging there as a kid. The dirt detection is pretty shitty. Bugs Bunny is a little bit more of a maze it seems. Or maybe it did seem as a, a child. Hey, that height! Oh, is this the and there we go. And I'm even like, uh, right there jumping around for joy like I finally did it I finally beat this level after all these years after quite a few times thinking back about this game and then remembering that I never got through this level it's finally been conquered and I spend a little while looking for collectibles get the less uh, the last Sylvester here if it wasn't for bad luck I'd have no luck at all. Buddy Cat, you're the most fun to play with. You did it. Oh, thank you. Won't you take this monkey for me? At first, I thought it might be Sylvester. Darn these glasses. A pretty good haul. And funny thing is, like, playing it now, what remains in the game, I think I could have actually beaten as a kid. I mean, I should have. This game was made with a skill floor meant to accommodate Ooh, little children. I don't see why I wouldn't have been able to beat it. Uh, it's just this one particular level that gave me so much trouble. I guess that's finally behind me now, huh? Now the only game I distinctly remember not being as beating as a kid is Super Mario Sunshine. But that might be for another day, if ever. I'm not sure how well the game would translate with an Xbox controller. 
given that it utilizes uh, GameCube's half like uh, left and right trigger presses. Well, the Xbox One controller just has a full left and right trigger press. My roadblock in that one was the second PD Piranha encounter in Bianco Hills, but that's neither here nor there. Once again, hopefully they make another... How the fuck did I die there? Hopefully they make another Looney Tunes game in the future. I checked Steam and literally the only Looney Tunes related game is that uh, Scooby-Doo and Looney Tunes one I talked about earlier. The one with mixed reviews. And apparently you don't even play as a Looney Tunes character in it which seems very surreal if you think about it. I really would like to see another Looney Tunes game, but then again, I am a fan of the show. As you can probably tell by the amount of stuff I've talked about related to it. A lot's been added since then. Uh, since back in action. What I find kind of interesting is that Lola wasn't in Looney Tunes back in action. I know Chuck Jones didn't like her because she was drawn, and I'm saying this not as a furry, but as an objective fact, she was drawn to seem attractive, which meant you can't really do anything really funny with her, because nobody likes to see attractive women in slapstick. In fact, Chuck Jones didn't like the Space Jam movie in general. He would argue that Bugs Bunny would have solved the problem in a few minutes, if even that. But Lola did kind of make an appearance in merchandise and comics since then, and she's in the uh, uh, Looney Tunes show, the Seinfeld sort of Looney Tunes, where they gave her different design and a more Looney Tunes-esque personality. So it is nice that she got some character development and was able to present herself as an actual Looney Tunes and not just furry fat bait. I don't know if Tyranny would get a sort of redesign in the same treatment. She was never furry fat bait because Xenos aren't furry. That's a true fact. It's established just like the laws of physics. I guess in general it's kind of difficult to... I have no idea why I'm standing around here by the way. It's kind of difficult to come up with a new character for such an established IP. Because most people just want to see the old characters. Now Lola and Tyranny are kind of waifu bait. So they would easily return with open arms. But something like the chipmunk from Wabbit. I think that will be a bit more difficult to uh, put them back in re later iterations with all the classic characters like Elmer Fudd and Yosemite Sam and of course Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. And while these characters are timeless and they're very versatile uh, in terms of what you can do with them, occasionally people would like to see something new. And that's one of the things I kind of liked from Wabbit. There were a few new human characters who seemed like good candidates for uh, slapstick and future scenarios. Anyways, in this mission, you don't really have much control over how close you get to Daffy. It's kind of just happens later on in the mission. Like, there's no way to really speed yourself up other than going in specific places, but there's not really any good indication of those places. Following the coins don't seem to do much, and even when you bump into the walls and rocks, it doesn't take very long for you to get close to him. And there are moments when the game does, like, push you both Bugs and Daffy very close together. It's not all that difficult to control, but it can uh, be a bit tricky or seem a bit tricky to know when you're cutting it too close to a corner. At least the fire's out. But overall, it's not a very difficult mission, and man, how did I not get Daffy there? There we go. 
it's not exactly an auto scroller you still have to do inputs but it's not really a mission where your skill matters all too much but it is short and there is a limited amount of time to complete it so I guess it's not too bad and hey get a monkey for it and that's always good in this game Little guy, I think I'll keep him. In some ways, after playing through this, I kind of wish I didn't see the speedruns. But then again, it's seeing the speedruns that compelled me to make this Let's Play because it reminded me of all the memories I had of the game and made me want to experience it again. A bit of a catch 22, huh? Like you don't want to see his speedruns because of spoilers, but then again you kind of need to see his speedruns because, well, that's uh, inspiration for making this Let's Play. And boy, would my commentary be sparse if those speedrunners weren't there, huh? Who knows, maybe we ought to employ speedrunners more. Maybe we ought to use them to fix a... Uh, financial issues. No more businessmen, no more politicians, just get some speedrunners to solve it. They'll figure out a particular place in Wall Street you need to stand in and then do a double jump to clip through the floor and cause some frame perfect uh, test or whatever to increase a uh, stock market value and better distribute money to the populace. Who knows what they'll be able to come up with, but given how much they've broken video games, I'm pretty sure they can figure out a way to break economics and politics in a way that benefits us. Or maybe they'll be completely useless, but we don't know until we try, right? We've tried giving it to a bunch of greedy assholes. Let's give it to a bunch of fast assholes instead. The guy who got the first sub one hour Super Mario Odyssey speedrun for President 2020. Let's start this. And I also got the Roadrunner seed. Now speaking of speedruns, there is a way to get to this area specifically like pretty much right off the bat after starting a new level and that's using a cheat code that brings up this bonus level that I will be showing later and for whatever reason after you beat it and do some tricks in it it takes you pretty much right here and they want to figure out a way to get past this final door that you need uh, 35 monkeys in order to open. And if they can get past that final door, the world record for the game would go from an hour and 25-ish minutes to under an hour. So there's still speedrun potential for the game, but because it's not exactly a very popular game to speedrun, again, even Agony seems to have more people involved in speedrunning it. It's probably not going to be found out anytime soon. But something about movie tie games makes me think that they're made with less quality control than other sorts of games, like they exist ultimately to sell the movie they're based on. I mean, you can argue there's AAA games that are made with far less care than this one. Bethesda, I am looking right at you, but hey. There is a speedrun strat where you, if you roll into Taz at the right speed, the tornado you're in will be much faster than it is here and you'll actually be able to jump indefinitely and you'll effectively be able to skip this whole segment. Still, it's not difficult to complete this segment, just go in a clockwise or counterclockwise motion and there'll be these tribesmen respawning. They tend to respawn on the outer ring 
But if they start running too far away for you to catch, just ignore them and keep going. And they don't necessarily absolutely need to respawn off screen, but it takes about the amount of time for you to make the area off screen, as you can see right there, in order for them to respawn, as it does take for them to respawn. Maybe you're able to sort of farm the same general area, but I find this method works the best. It's pretty consistent, it keeps Taz's stomach full, or mostly full. At some point in time, you probably could stop chasing these guys and just let the timer run out, like maybe right here at the 6 second mark. But I keep going anyways. I like eating these guys. Kinda makes me wonder, like, the difficulty in choosing, and also you can't damage Taz, he'll fight back and hurt you. Makes me wonder about the difficulty that came with choosing what characters to represent in the Looney Tunes back in action movie. Cause even though it is absolutely fantastic that Marvin the Martian had such a presence in it, I won't trade that. Yeah, Taz didn't really have much of a role in it, so it's kind of unfortunate for Taz fans. You know? And even in this game, he doesn't really have much of a role either. It's probably not as bad as like the Simpsons movie, where there's like hundreds of iconic characters he had to choose from. And they even missed or left out King and Kodos, which is fucking bullshit. Those two should be in it. They're my favorites. I tend to have an affinity for aliens, I don't know why. But still, you know, there's only so much a movie you can have, and that's maybe one of the reasons why there should be just an animated movie and not live actors in it. Because that will give the actual cartoons more screen time. Speedy G Gonzalez and Porky Pig also didn't have much presence in the movie. Hopefully Space Jam 2 has better cartoon representation. Hope Marvin returns, or he will. At last, I can smell the filthy richness. Quick, let me up on your shoulders so I can ring the bell! I don't know, Dave. Seems like we ought to find more monkeys before we wrap it up. You know, so we can change them all back. Oh, no you don't. Not when I'm so close. You wouldn't dare. The sooner we get those monkeys, the sooner I'll help you open the door. Fine. Have it your way. Killjoy. So yeah, there's a cutscene to establish we need 35 monkeys. I go back to Acme Studios and find the Sylvester's and Roadrunner seeds that I missed. But I was saying, like, Marvin very likely will, because there was a sort of teaser image posted of, I think it's LeBron James's locker or something. I think that's who it is in the new Space Jam. And engraved into the wooden walls, and here's a body block for that particular segment. Engraved into the wooden walls are some of the Looney Tunes, and one of them is, surprise surprise, Marvin the Martian. Which is nice, he's so important that he's one of the, like, three or four who was represented in that poster. And I decide to do the Roadrunner chase to get one of the monkeys. There's a sort of often reposted observation that the reason Marvin the Martian was a referee in Space Jam is because being both an alien and a Looney Tunes, he would be the most neutral party in a match between aliens and Looney Tunes. Which kind of brings up the question, will the aliens return? Will we see them, the monster aliens, return, or will it be a new gang of evil? Who knows, and will Marvin be the referee? Who knows, I mean, there's like next to no information about the movie. 
And it's kind of funny that movie would be getting a sequel and not just a new sort of Looney Tunes movie, but I guess they're cashing in on the nostalgia. Warner Brothers seems to give a slight bit of shit about Space Jam because Lola Bunny returns and they even reference it in this video game. And like apparently a website is still up and hasn't been changed since the 90s making it like the internet equivalent of finding a dinosaur fossil. I guess speaking of like old websites maybe future let's plays or whatever could be the different cartoon tie-in games on like cartoonnetwork.com from way back when. I know there's like a Duck Dodgers tie-in online game. Had like a few episodes and I have actually beaten that one. Rest assured. Final Monkey I Collect is from Falkhorn Lakehorn here which is following actually the speedrunning route where they also go back and get the monkey from Falkhorn here. They also get the one from uh, the Acme Studios or Warner Studios. But they do that after the door segment at the end of the Africa world and not while they're in the first world. Unfortunately, since we had to go back to this particular mission and I decided to abuse Bugs Bunny here, it means we have to pretty much go through the whole Taz fight again. So I decided to cut that out for you and get right to the delivering of the monkeys to the giant door. Here's the end game. So first thing we gotta do is go through yet another 2D chase section. It's uh, based on just outrunning this giant boulder up there and not about hitting monkeys, but that doesn't really do my clumsy ass much good, now does it? The boulder is pretty slow though, so it's no big deal. Just gotta keep pushing right. And once we reach this checkpoint, we're home free. I think this is all skipped by that Taz glit glitch I mentioned earlier. Then we need to get up here. Quit bugging me. I can't get to ya. And if we're able to do that, then comes the final fight, which unfortunately is kind of ruined by a series of sound glitches that plays during it. I don't know if it's Dolphin or the file I downloaded. Well, this seems familiar. <laughs> if there ain't jewels on the other side of this door, I'm calling the Union. There he is! Get the diamond! Why bother? We'd never miss it! Neither would I. But I do enjoy the symmetry. The chairman. Chairman Schmerman as long as I'm rich. Yes, the I'm chairman. Rich. We the meet monkey. again. Now you'll see the awesome power of the blue monkey diamond in action. We'll stop you, chairman. Not if you want to save this monkey. Well, he is only one. Or your friends, the real Mr. Warner, and this old lady! Ha! That's Granny to you, you bad man! Not so brave now, eh, Rabbit? And just in case you get any ideas... Hey! Easy on the upholstery! What's the big idea? Me and the jewels, we're just getting to know each other. Now watch as the whole world goes ape over at me. <laughs> That'd make a good slogan. I wonder whatever happened to that chimpanzee. <laughs> 
So, what do you say we go sign those? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a fortune selling Acme banana peelers! Enough! You have desecrated the spirit of the blue monkey. Uh-oh. This sounds familiar. You must pay for your evidence. Phew. Well, nobody's gonna miss. You must all pay. This is it. It's now or never. Yo! You a very, very big monkey. Gee, I was sure I'd get to be in the big boss battle. Frankly, I'm tickled pink. Welcome to my fans to this monumental matchup between the colossal stone monkey guardian and our own tweeting or the sentimental face. What with the fate of the wild hanging into balance? I'm Bucks Bunny, former star of this adventure. And I'm Daffy Duck. Available for weddings, bar mitzvahs, or to liven up any get-together. Assuming we survive the next five minutes, it looks like the stone monkey guardian... I find it kind of funny that Tweety sort of turns into this dinosaur monster, which would be pretty in line with actual science since birds are a ancestor or descended, I should say, of dinosaurs. And yet the movie sort of implies that human beings evolved from chimps. We no doubt evolved from apes, but it's a very common, to a degree of absurdity, misunderstanding to say we literally evolved from monkeys, like modern day monkeys. So somehow Looney Tunes was able to get this more obscure fact right, even if accidental, but wasn't able to get the very basic aspect of human evolution right. And indeed, dinosaurs did have feathers or something close to it, though they didn't exactly have bat wings like Tweety does. Now, for this fight, it took me some time to figure out how to do it. And what you want to do is go right whenever he raises his arms, because if he raises his arms to the right, or to his our left, then you'll be able to hit him and you can get like two or three hits in him. And if he raises his arms to our right, then Tweety will dodge his attacks and it's not very difficult to then land some hits in. So basically, take both uh, joysticks and move them to the right whenever you see his arms raised. Speedrunners, however, want to make sure to point the, both joysticks in the direction that his arms are raised in from our point of view, whether they're right or left, because then they can get the hits in faster. They also time the sort of power attacks called PALS, the one Daffy seems to insist you're able to do whenever, despite the meter needing to be filled up. And they do it at a specific time where it knocks a monkey statue off of the cliff and into the lava. And I think there's like 11 hits before you're able to do a pow that knocks him clean off. You want some more with this? Pow! Pow, I said! Booyah! We're all counting on ya! Give him a big pow! Don't hold nothing back! This is gonna hurt you more than it's gonna hurt me! You can't do it, Tweety! Open wide! Finish him! You want some more of this? You now give it all you got! You want a piece of Tweety? Come and get some! I will! And there we go! Game pretty much finished there! Fluffer and fuck attack! I think he beat the giant stone monster! I did! I did! Look, it's the chairman! Oh, what an awful mess! Don't worry, he'll fade away in a second. They all do in these things. See? 
Hmm. So that's it? It's over? Well, that was sort of anticlimactic, don't you think? Oh, nice work, Big Mouth. Yeah! Back to the jungle, everyone! Yeah, but now we got no way to turn everybody back from monkeys. <laughs> there he is, and he's still got my meal ticket! <laughs> Finally, reunited, and it feels so... <laughs> <laughs> Cheated again! <laughs> the gravy train has left the station! <laughs> Anybody else got a hankering for a banana? <laughs> Z. Bird. Oh, come here, you little lifesaver, you. <laughs> that was a mighty selfless thing you did, Dad. Giving up your dream and all to save the wild. Sure. Rub it in. Attention, everyone. I'd just like to thank you all for saving my life. Today, we saw a little known side of one of our family members. And I, for one, think some recognition would be in order. I'm talking about someone who's quick on his feet. No one quicker. Someone good under pressure. Pressure's my middle name. A bird of uncommon valor. I got valor in spades. I believe that today, Warner Brothers has discovered a new action hero. And we're going to be making a lot of movies together. Right. And you can expect big box office from me, Mr. Warner. Titanic, in fact. Take a bow, Tweety. Yes, sir. Talent always wins out in the... Tweety! I just want to thank all the little people. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny. And many more. <laughs> Fabulous riches! A chance to impress the big boss. <laughs> I had it all in my grasp. And I blew it! <laughs> hey, Death, we're all going to the Dobie to celebrate Tweety's new movie deal. Wanna come? <laughs> Never mind me. <laughs> I've got a date with the worms. <laughs> if they'll even have me. <laughs> come on, we got worms back in Boy Bank. You sure you don't want a ride? <laughs> a ride? <laughs> What's it gonna cost me? Don't worry, Death. I'll cut you a special deal. You want how much? So there's been Looney Tunes back in action. After all these years, I've played it again and finished it. It's a pretty fun game even after all these years, simple as it is. And probably worth a torrent on an emulator site since well of course PS2 games and GameCube games aren't sold anymore and again I hope they make more Looney Tunes games I find funny that banter and dialogue are two separate teams like they need extra minds to figure out how Bugs and Daffy snipe each other oh, Electronic Arts and wonder what they've been doing since making this game Probably continuing to win over the hearts of gamers that grew up with this particular title. Going on to be a stand-up company that makes a positive influence on the video game industry. No doubt. Anyways, here's how to unlock the special level. You need to go to cheat codes and you need to type in outtakes, which is O-U-T-T-A-K-E.
Then you want to go to new file. I've already activated this in file A and I played in file B. And in the first world, there will be a new bonus challenge calling Duck Danger. Now this new challenge is pretty clearly not very finished. Like you don't actually take damage in it, if you can believe it. I kind of wonder if this was supposed to be the actual opening of the game rather than just a cutscene. You get to play as Daphne you taking down this villain and then it cuts to the uh, chairman of Warner Brothers or whatever saying the idea is stupid. It would be an introduction to fighting and to jumping. It would also be for a pretty unique boss fight but it doesn't have any tie into the movie. So unfinished, and they went through all the trouble of making the environment and the machine and the dialogue. So it is a wonder it was scrapped. Anyways, that pretty much covers it for the actual content of the game. There's an additional little thing where you can play the Roadrunner races where rather than reaching a specific speed you're able to try to see how fast you go before you're unable to go any further you get hit three times and I'll actually be showing that off in a little bit but overall this is sort of the end of the let's play it's been fun going back to this game and seeing some of the things I missed, seeing some of the things I both did and didn't remember, and of course getting past where I left off as a child and finally beating this game. I hope that, you know, again I must say there's other Looney Tunes games that are on PC in the future, and I hope they kind of follow along with this game and at least try to diversify their gameplay and try to incorporate uh, different Looney Tunes characters in pretty good ways. Maybe it'll take a new movie like Space Jam 2 or maybe they'll just do it because they want to see if they can reach the video game market. But until that day comes, whenever it may be, I Look forward to seeing whatever else is in store for this intellectual property. Well, time to crash in 269. And you can see what I mean by uh, how much more difficult it is to actually get to your previous speed. I hope the new cartoons, a uh, thousand minute one, ends up being good and revitalizes interest in the Looney Tunes. But, you know, uh, aside from that, I guess all the same, I hope you enjoyed the video and that I gave you something to think about and otherwise entertained you. Take care.